Okay, welcome to Level 1 Science Online with Any Fun Feeling. Hi Year 11, I hope you guys are doing really, really well. There's some horrible weather around with gusts and you name it. I'm sure there was some hail coming down earlier. But anyways, I hope everybody is dry and safe. Um, we need to continue with our um, with our learning with this genetic variation. Um, we're getting very close to the end of the topic and then we'll be writing topic test next week. So um, today I'm going to be talking about quickly touching on meiosis. We did look at that last time before we left for lockdown. Um, if you want to recap, you can go and look at the um, Amoeba Sisters, what do you call it, video. Um, I'll put a link up if you want to recap for that. But um, today we're going to start and look at sexual reproduction. Okay, so here we go. Alright, now reproduction. All organisms need to reproduce, whether it's sexually or asexually, to create offspring that carry their genetic information. In other words, the DNA as part of the life process that defies them as living. Some organisms reproduce sexually and together with a mate of the same species, they produce an offspring that have a combination of both parents' genetic material. And that's most of the living organisms that you think of um, on a daily basis. The offspring from sexual reproduction will show variants of their traits. In other words, we talked about how brothers and sisters can look different. Um, and we'll go into, well, we'll recap why those differences exist in a moment or two. Other organisms, though, are able to reproduce asexually with no mate required and all of their offspring will have identical genetic material to their parents with no variation seen. Okay, so for instance, the aphid. An aphid is um, a little, it's almost like a, it's a, almost like a tick for plants. It sits on plant leaves and then suck out the plant juices. Now aphids can asexually reproduce. You think about it, here's this aphid, and he's like, oh, I'm so, I'm so lonely, I think I'm going to make another one of myself. And there you go. Um, which is incredible. But you see it quite a bit in plants. So if you look at the strawberry plant, they have what's called runners. And these, these runners come, and then where it actually then touches the soil, you can grow a brand new... Um, a brand new strawberry plant. And you read about... Um, the bananas we also have banana pups where we do that and I don't know if any of you have got agaves at home um, agave are uh, in Mexico they actually use them to make tequila in Auckland they grow really really easily um, and basically you take the agave you just cut it off doesn't have any roots and then you put it in the ground and lo and behold it grows a brand new roots and there you go so those are all clones um, but it is an asexual reproduction. So I mentioned about the aphids, that is how an aphid looks, and they can they don't need to have a male and a female present, they can just clone themselves. There's a Komodo dragon who was in the London Zoo and her mate died three years before she suddenly gave birth. And it was just, what? How is it possible? There hasn't been a male year for so long ended up that she fertilized her own egg. So in other words, she made an egg with with the complete chromosomes in it. Um, there is a specific word for it, which I cannot remember now. There's a whole species of, um, of lizards in, um, I think it's in Mexico, where it's mainly females, and they just reproduce asexually. And we talked about strawberries already with their runners and their daughter cells. And then over here you can see the banana, um, and that's the banana pup. So you can see underground it's this bulb with all the roots, and then out of the bulb comes a little plant, and that has roots. So you basically put a shovel in there, clink, and you and you cut it off, kind of, and then you go and plant it somewhere else. And that's how you reproduce banana plants. There you can see the strawberry plant again with the runners and the daughters, daughter plants. So that is asexual. It means that they are exactly the same DNA-wise. Um, there's no difference in the DNA. Um, they will have the same phenotype and so forth. 
but in humans there's a lot of variation and the way that we get variation is through sexual um, reproduction now for sexual reproduction to occur you need sperm and the egg and you need their nuclei to form now remember the sperm and egg is called the gamete and the gamete um, contains or well, that's the product of meiosis meiosis you get four non-identical daughter cells that are haploid four haploid for half non-identical daughter cells okay um, and the reason why they need to be haploid or half the genetic material is because you will have half in the sperm and half in the egg and when they get together then you have a brand new zygote so here we go um, this is a very nice animation of fertilization your sperm will come now remember they carry 23 chromosomes and inside this huge it's a uh, it's surrounded by other cells is your actual egg cell this around the outside is called the zona pellucida you don't have to, need to know that but then your sperm will get into there and the amazing thing is in its nose it has digestive enzymes which you'll see now it basically goes to the egg and then um, it digests the membrane so that it can get in and the moment it gets in the membrane of the egg cell changes completely and it's no longer permeable for any other um, sperm to get in that's why you can only have one sperm fertilize one egg otherwise you will have too many um, genetic material in there so here goes the sperm it's called the pronuclei then it gets to the eggs pronuclei and when they fuse it will be a brand new zygote and right there is a completely unique individual with half of its genetic material from the sperm and half of the genetic material from the egg so it is a brand new individual um, and that is fertilization so if a mutation happened in the gametic cells then it will be passed on like this if the mutated sperm or the mutated egg were fertilized okay so here's a scanning electron microscope um, image of the same thing you have the cells surrounding the egg did you know that the the human egg cell is the biggest cell in the human body and the guys don't even have it so guys we don't have anything even close to the size of the human egg in fact sperm is really really small in comparison but anyways you have the two pronuclei that come together the moment they come together you have a zygote and that is called fertilization okay okay just a quick recap of meiosis remember first part of meiosis is well even before meiosis you need to replicate your DNA and we talked about that and remember when it's in this X shape then it is considered a single chromosome so this organism has got only two chromosomes they line up in the midline and what they uh, how they line up left and right whether it's from the maternal origin or the paternal origin is completely random okay so um, if this is um, sperm being made then the mom that is yeah, the mom of the person making the sperm she would have donated this chromosome and the dad of the person making the sperm would be it would be he donated that so this one originally came from an egg and this one originally came from a sperm but now this person is making sperm and they'd randomly align left or right in their homologous pairs do you remember that we call that independent assortment or random assortment okay random assortment simply means left and right it is completely random okay but they are in their homologous pairs then they cross over and that's basically they cross over by exchanging pieces of DNA between the two chromatids that are closest together then the first part is they pull the homologous pairs apart so can you see this is now the so we went from we're still deployed there we have pairs and now after the first part of meiosis we have now haploid because you don't no longer have any pairs and what happens now is that the same as in mitosis they simply break apart the at the centromere and then they go into 
the two subunits. Now you can see this one is not the same as this one because there's a little piece um, that is from the original maternal chromosome there and this one is as you can see also different to that one and that one is different. So four unique haploid cells. This is just again with crossing over we've discussed this where the homologous pairs so that would be this could be chromosome 16 and chromosome 16 they carry the same genes they will be alleles of each other and then the proximal parts will change over so some of the genes or recipes from the mother's family is now being carried here on the dad's on the one leg of the dad's um, gene although yeah I should almost call them grandfather and grandmother if this is going to be sperm or egg so this was the grandfather's um, DNA and this was the mother's DNA and that's what they gave to their kids and on, so that came from the grandmother's egg and this came from the grandfather's sperm then they cross over now it's a mix of grandma and grandpa or origin and that is crossing over and then the random assortment part you can see here it doesn't matter if you are left or right that is completely random okay so crossing over random assortment and remember the last thing is random fertilization a random sperm and a random egg okay that is really important so three things crossing over random assortment and random fertilization there's another picture showing the same thing um, this video about meiosis now we need to talk about gender or no sorry I heard that gender is is what you decide in your mind whereas sex is a biological term so when the sex is XX that is the female okay and as you can see when a when a potential mom makes an egg she can only give an X chromosome whereas when guys make sperm they can give either the X or the Y to the sperm that they're making so if the sperm that contains the X combines with an egg from the mom it's going to be a girl but if the sperm containing the Y combines with the egg from the mom it's going to be a boy because boys are XY okay um I think we have watched this video, but okay. So here's mom and dad, and mom is expecting, and everybody says, Ooh, is it a boy or a girl? Ooh, it's gonna be a boy. Look, no, that is it a boy or a girl? So let's look, and now we're basically gonna do a little Punnett square exercise. So this baby, is it a boy? Is it a girl? It's always a 50 50 chance for every fertilization, okay? Because the dad can give X and Y and the mom can give X only so mom gives an X dad gives an X it's a girl mom gives an X dad gives a Y it's a boy so here we go mom gives an X dad gives an X it is a girl and now dad gives a Y it is a boy okay so that is how we determine gender Yay. Okay, um, and that's the human carrier type there, and you can see the female is XX and male is XY. Okay, so this just is a summary of mitosis and meiosis. Meiosis, you start with 46 and you end up with four non-identical daughter cells, whereas mitosis, you start off with 46, you end up with 46, they are exactly the same. And mitosis is for growth and repair, and meiosis is for gamete production. Um, yep, talked about that. There's some more information on meiosis. We've covered that already. So, another picture just showing you. We've talked about this already. So, um, this picture has actually come up in some of the past papers. So, where you have basically, you start off with the mom and the dad, they both have 46. 
then there's a mutation when he's producing sperm so that um, you have independent assortment and you have um, random fertilization and the last one is crossing over and then we have 23 and 23 it is hailing now yeah okay so 23 sperm and 23 um, 23 chromosomes there and 23 chromosomes there they come together random fertilization and that is 46 in forming a zygote which turn into an embryo which turns into a baby and turns into an adult and finds a mate and the whole process happens again okay Now, causes of variation, we've just said that. Um, this is just, again, independent assortment, crossing over, random fertilization, and then if a mutation occurs, you get a brand new allele. So, what are the advantages and disadvantages of sexual reproduction versus asexual reproduction? So, some advantages of sexual reproduction, you get variation in the offspring. means that some will be better suited to change in conditions and others will not. Think about you and your siblings or your friends. Some of them will get the cold and it's like they don't not sick at all. And then you get that same cold from them and you are plastered to the ground. Um, you are so sick. And that is just variation between us. There's differences between us. Um, now, another advantage is mates can be selected to pass on desirable tra traits to the offspring. In other words, if you're a breeder and you want a certain desirable trait, like let's say you um, are a dairy farmer, then you take a female with a really big udder and you mate her with a son of a, um, of a dairy cow that had a really big udder and hopefully the offspring will then also have really big udders, if you understand what I mean by that. Then human, oh, yeah, so humans can selectively breed traits and other species for their advantage. For example, different rose types and you know, all roses, or dogs is a great example. I mean, a Chihuahua and a Great Dane, they have the same DNA, but breeders have selected different alleles to get them to where they are. Disadvantages of sexual reproduction is you need two parents to be there. You can't just suddenly have another guy there. Um, if conditions are stable, it could introduce variation, but which may be counterproductive. Okay. Um, all this variation, you sometimes don't want that. You don't want it to change. It involves energy in producing reproductive stu um, structures of phenotypes to attract mates. So if you think about a peacock, um, with that enormous tail that that makes that he's really vulnerable against attacks from predators uh, he doesn't fly very well so but it's the energy that needs to be spent to attract the girl so that's what he does if pollination is unsuccessful then no seeds are produced I mean, it's a waste of energy and time and no genetic material will be passed on for future generations so imagine your plant that you have in your room and it's flowering but there's no pollinators because you kill all the flies that come into your house and there's no bees in your house so how is the pollen going to get from one flower to another it's just wasted literally and then time consuming compared to asexual reproduction it takes time to produce reproductive structures to attract them to find a mate and so forth however asexual reproduction they you have exact twins of the same thing okay and um, if you think about a potato plant, you plant a potato and that's going to be the same as the previous potato plant you had. It's not the flower. Potatoes are tubers. They are roots. The flower is quite different. It's up here and you can potato seeds from that. This is hydra, which is a really cool organism. It kind of can flop over and, and walk like that. Um, but it also then grows what's called a polyp. And then it's a baby. But it's not a baby in the true sense because it's just a clone. And the disadvantages is that you don't have genetic variation, which makes you very um, susceptible to diseases. So the advantages are that it's fast to have asexual reproduction. You don't waste energy and time producing flowers or all those kind of things. You don't need to spend energy to find an actual mate. 
you don't need to rely on pollinators or males or females for that matter depending on what what sex the organism is guaranteed success of producing offspring can make numerous copies of the plant through cuttings all desirable t traits are passed down because it's not being mixed or diluted with any others and all offspring are genetically identical and best suited to an environment if conditions remain stable like the banana as long as we don't get rust um, then the bananas will be okay um, or a different disease for that matter however disadvantages are that the population overruns a food source very quickly um, if parents have an undesirable trait then all the offspring will also have that let's say the parent had a mutation and the um, the offspring will have the same mutation all offsprings are identical so this creates vulnerability in the environment as it changes or pests and disease occur okay so if we compare asexual and sexual single double single parent passes on all traits each parent passes only half of its genes to the offspring asexual the offspring are genetically identical sexual the each individual offspring has a unique combination of genes variation for asexual variation is only created by rare mutations variation is created in each individual during sexual reproduction okay so I think well this is a good example with the birds of paradise the amount of energy that they expend to attract a mate is huge absolutely huge so there's obviously a disadvantage but it's beautiful for us but yeah um, it is quite interesting so the female will choose the most attractive male um, not necessarily the one that's best at feeding babies but the one that looks the best okay so this was question 3a for both plants and animals there are advantages and disadvantages I identified two disadvantages um, of sexual reproduction in animals and explain they, why they are disadvantages. Yeah, we just went through that. In 2013, they also said explain how sexual reproduction contributes to variation in the population of animals. In your answer, you should refer to gametes, meiosis, and fertilization. So we just talked about that, how the gametes are formed, then crossing over, um, and a random assortment, and then random fertilization. Alrighty, so and in 2014, the diagram below shows the relationship between gametes, zygotes, and chromosome number in humans. Name the process represented by A. Cells in the testes become sperm, this is meiosis. Now they have 23 chromosomes. The egg has how many chromosomes? 23. That is what you had to fill in there. They come together. This is called fertilization. Now you have a zygote and it's 46 and adult has 46 so can you see there's that same diagram again then they say compare the chromosome number of number of the egg sperm and zygote and adult and explain any differences and similarities in the number well we talked about that significantly so egg and sperm is 23 zygote and adult is 46 and the way that it happens is through meiosis and then fertilization and zygote formation. There's that same um, thing again in 2015. They asked you about the numbers and we went through that. And also name one process that occurs during sexual reproduction and explain how it results in variation. And we've discussed that a lot today. Um, here's more sexual reproduction. Um, Venus flytrap are plants that live in poor quality soils. They have specially adapted leaves that snap shut to catch insects. The plants reproduce sexually, involving the production of flowers. Discuss the advantage of sexual reproduction. In your answer, you should define sexual reproduction. Explain how one important process in sexual reproduction helps to produce variation in offspring and plant population over generations one important process in sexual reproduction 
produce variation, so you only have to discuss one of crossing over or random assortment um, or random fertilization and then plant population over generations. Why is it good to have that variation? 2017 was the banana question. Wild bananas have large seeds and reproduce sexually. Farmed bananas are produced asexually from banana pups. Um, and how does the production of the gamete result in the variation of wild bananas? Can you see it's the same question? Just a different organism. Okay, um, we're going to stop there for today. Thank you so much for your time. And um, I hope you are well, and dry, and not blowing away. Keep well. Bye.